Hello, it's your motorcycle buddy Frank, and this is the 2022 Kawasaki Z650 RS. I've owned this bike for exactly one year now, so I thought I'd make a video detailing my thoughts about the motorcycle and what it's like to own this one after 12 months of riding it. So the first thing I love about this motorcycle is the appearance. They got the styling down for this motorcycle excellently. Sometimes I like to just step out into the garage and look at it, because it's such a beautiful motorcycle. Well, why don't we go for a ride? So in my first year of riding this motorcycle, I have 2,600 miles on it. That may seem a little bit low, but I have two other motorcycles as well, so I kind of split the mileage between them. So the Z650 RS, what's great about it and what's not so great about it? Well, this motorcycle excels on back roads like this. It's such an easy handling motorcycle, very approachable. Going around these corners, I mean, you can just lean it in so easily. Also, riding around town, it's great for stop and go traffic. The seat height is very manageable. Here's a little set of twisties. We can clean the bike over a bit. It's just so effortless going around these corners. Oh, gravel. loves to lean over. More gravel. That's kind of unfortunate. Now, the range on this motorcycle is decent, but not spectacular. If you're riding at a fairly late back pace and you're not really revving the engine out, then you can get usually over 150 miles on a tank. So it's what, a 3.1 gallon tank, I think. And so yeah, we're looking at 50 miles per gallon usually, 50 to 60. Aside from the handling, the brakes are spectacular on this motorcycle. It has ABS on it, standard, I believe. Uh, they might sell it without ABS, I don't know. But this particular motorcycle has ABS. So when you want to stamp on these brakes, uh, it will stop you in a hurry. It has dual disc brakes in the front, which means that 
the stopping power is definitely there. So let's do a braking test for 40 miles per hour. So I felt the ABS working on the back brake. And the front brake was just solid, planted. Uh, the gearing on this motorcycle is pretty close together, which is not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, riding on windy roads like this, I mean, I'm in sixth gear right now, and I mean, this engine's comfortable above anywhere above 2,000 RPMs. So, top gear, I mean, you can go basically 30 miles per hour, and then roll onto the throttle and plenty of torque to accelerate. Of course, most of the torque is up in the higher revs of this engine, but yeah, it's great for going around slow corners where you don't feel like downshifting through the gears. You can just leave it in top gear. One area that I have found problematic with this motorcycle is the engine vibration. Like, coming through the handlebars, it really uh, kind of buzzes your hands and your wrists after a while. I mean, it's only really on long rides that you notice it, but probably after an hour or an hour and a half, I mean, you really start to feel it in your wrists and your hands start to get tingly. So, this motorcycle is definitely better for just shorter rides. But aside from the uh, vibration coming through the handlebars, it would be a pretty good bike for riding long distances because, I mean, the riding position is very comfortable. The handlebars are up in a very natural position and the seat is nice and comfortable. Foot pegs are at a really neutral position. And the suspension is uh, a little bit on the soft side, which is actually fine for doing uh, rides on roads that are not perfectly smooth. It absorbs the bumps quite nicely. I mean, it's not going to be so stiff that uh, it's going to be like excelling on the track or anything, but I don't think anyone's really going to take this bike to the track. So it's okay to have a little bit of bouncy suspension. Makes the ride a little more comfortable. Let's look at the instrument cluster. I really like this design. I mean, the retro style bullet uh, tachometer and speedometer. And then it's got a nice little here in the middle that shows your gear indicator, uh, fuel gauge, temperature gauge, time, and then you can cycle through your remaining range, average miles per gallon, and you have your trip A and trip B. It's a nice design. Very simple, and yet it suits this bike. Let's get on to the highway. So, how does the RS feel at highway speeds? Obviously, there's no windscreen, so you really feel that wind pressure against your chest. The engine has plenty of power to cruise at highway speeds, but after about 15 or 20 minutes, the wind will start to wear you out. I definitely wouldn't want to spend long periods of time on the highway on this bike. Being a middleweight motorcycle, it feels heavy enough that it doesn't get buffeted by trucks very much. I ride this bike to work somewhat regularly. 
and for that I spend about 15 minutes on the highway, which feels fine. Here we are in Frank's garage, and let's talk about the maintenance requirements. I have to say that this motorcycle is the easiest to work on that I've ever experienced. Like changing the oil is incredibly simple. Your oil filter is right out in the open here. Drain plug looking down at the other side is very easy to access so changing the oil in this motorcycle is incredibly simple and it takes a very small amount of oil actually I think uh, under two quarts so oil changes are cheap quick and easy and otherwise over the course of the first year I've had no issues whatsoever with any maintenance. So to wrap up, if I could go back in time and go back to the motorcycle dealer, would I still buy this motorcycle or would I buy something else? Well, the answer is that I would absolutely still buy this. It's a very fun motorcycle. Well, thank you for joining me on this ride on the Z650 RS. I will see you in the next video.